Welcome to the walkthrough of Scribalive, a very popular social media curation and content creation tool used by a lot of media, primarily for the coverage of breaking news events. My name is Kurt Gessler, and I'm going to take you on a quick tour of this relatively intuitive piece um, going through how to set up an event and then how to add different pieces of content to that event. This is an example of what a white label setup would look like. Um, it is fully responsive, which is nice. You see there's tweets, video, even vines. And that cat, no matter how many times he tries, will not make it. So let's take you to the beginning process here. And I'm sorry if this is a little noisy in the background. I'm doing this uh, from the newsroom of the Chicago Tribune right now. So let's create a new event. This is really a four-step process here. First thing you need to have is a title. We'll call it, this example, Chicago Winter 2013. Um, we will open this now. We'll say a big storm is uh, approaching and we're going to start grabbing content from a variety of sources. So we do a title. We do a little introduction. Just select one category. We'll do news. Language, we're in the right time zone. Commenting is on by default in our settings. We'll put discussion on. Discussion allows you to comment on an individual post. We'll turn likes on. This does not connect with Facebook or anything else. It's only a like within the Scribblelive environment, but really does no harm. And there's our language filter. Let's choose a template next. For our case, we have a template set up, kind of a white label separate site. Fully responsive, very mobile friendly, very uh, very important in something like this when all of your first responders are going to be via phones and tablets and things. Uh, we're going to turn the map display off. It's currently not functioning tremendously well, so I don't get a lot of hope out of it. Now here's an important step. There's kind of two ways content is going to be added to um, uh, a scribble event. There's going to be, you know, your content curators and writers, of which you're the creator, you're one of them, and you can invite any number of people that have Scribblelive accounts to it. And then there's also commenters themselves. This is the part where you would invite as many people as you want to participate in this. Reporters in the field, people that you know and have relationships with that have accounts, and they could directly add to this. So for this example, we don't need to add anyone. We're just going to go on to the next step. And this is for syndication here. Um, in this case, we are just going to um, make ours available. We'll keep it free in case anyone wants to use it. Um, and there will be the syndication code. If anyone wants to pull our event into another scribble they're doing, perhaps someone is doing a larger scribble event on Midwest storms, and they want our stream to be part of their stream. And then we'll click on Start Writing. It decides to work. Oh, need a description here. Okay. Let's see if it likes it better now. There we go. Okay, as you see here, now we've reached a point where um, we've got a vertical navigation bar of some tools here. We have the social search tool here, which is great for a lot of curation, but we're going to spend a lot of our time outside of this to find what we need. And then there's the two ways that we can post to this. So the first thing we're going to do is create a quick post detailing what we're doing. You know, we'll be covering the storm. Something to give people a little sense of what's going to be here and why they should be following. Um, I'm going to do a few quick pieces here. <clears throat> a few quick links to build some value into this post. I'm going to be sticking at the top here.
Now I'm just using the quick tab here to post this. The quick tab has um, many of the tools that I need. I can make that a link. Again, our goal is to put a little introductory paragraph here up just to kind of build what we're doing. But again, this is a good example of the type of content that you can do. So this isn't just a social media curation piece. Um, you could do as many um, uploads as you want. You could do long form content pieces here too. Now you wouldn't want to do a, a 300 word story here, but you could actually have someone sitting here writing constantly, hey, this is what I'm seeing, this is what I'm hearing. And I think there'd be a lot of value in that kind of approach. Seabradar is down right now. Just for today, they're doing some technical updates. Maybe before a mythical big storm will hit, they'll have everything done. So I've added all this. I've used the link tool. Now I'm going to save the post. So you'll see, ooh, will be coverage. It's terrible. We'll be covering the storm as it moves in, stay with us all night. So as you see here, as I hover over the corner here, I'm going to select sticky. So the first person, when they come to this event here from the site, um, they'll see right away, this is what we're doing, they get a sense of it. There's some value built into the piece with some links that they can use. And we can go from there. I could have done this as well from the advanced tab. There's a few more tools that are native to this. You could do some bulleted stuff, some quotes, but realistically, some of the tools here, like Upload Media, exists on the Quick tab as well, so it's not a, a lot of reason for it. So we've got our introductory piece up here. We've done that. Let's start looking for some pieces that uh, we can add to it. You know, maybe we'll start out by doing a poll. <clears throat> What's the best part of winter? Not appropriate really for a uh, um, deadly storm, maybe a light storm. Snow, that could be outdoor activities. Um, cold weather food. We'll get some examples here. Like skiing. Um, About following blogs on Scribble. So as you see, that expanded as I offered me the opportunity. Once I got to three, if I needed more, it would continue to expand for as many options as I needed. So here's the poll. You can vote once. It's cookied. Um, so when a person comes back, they'll just simply see the uh, results in a horizontal bar chart form here. Um, so you can see I do post see how to do a poll. We could sticky that at the top too. However, there's only so much you really want to sticky at the top of something like this. So let's get to the meat of this. I think the thing that Scribble does best definitely is managing Twitter. So let's just start looking for, you know, photos that may be appropriate. So we'll just do a generic search here. And then we're going to start to refine here. So I just searched Chicago winter 2013. Already I see some things about winter, Chicago winter blues, full length coat. We could do whatever we need to here. Well, here's uh, Chicago Sun Times. Maybe we decided that this is an important one to add. So I simply clicked on it there and it immediately added it right there. Now, um, let's say you were more concerned about what type of users you know, you could maybe just do certified people, Twitter verified people who were tweeting about Chicago winter. And then you'd see we have this here. We've now changed this a lot. So we have different media companies. Here's CBS Chicago. There's a pretty good map. I could add this into the mix. That looks nice. Big warning. Here's John Cusack. 
I've seen this image a lot here. I'll skip it because I'm going to get to it later. Um, here's a the winter storm. Let me show you a trick on how we can see the single tweet display is kind of small. We want a larger display. Go over to the advanced tab, take this, drag and drop the whole thing there, and hit save post and you get a full Twitter card display, which is very nice. Now in addition to this pull down menu you can also um, select only tweets with photos as well. So you end up with a lot of Instagram too. But you see here for a visual medium like this, this could be tremendously valuable. No, I don't see a lot of value here. As you can see, it's a nice toolkit, but there's limitations to kind of how much you're wanting to hunt and peck in a very small window like this. So a lot of times you may decide, you know what I need to do is look for specific people. Just go from colon and then maybe at Jerry Taft. Hold on. I think the at sign is not necessary. Make this work here. Hmm. Well, let me see if the problem is what we have done before. Let's see if I have Jerry Taft up here. That is definitely his Twitter handle. I wonder if it's case sensitive. Pretty sure the colon is a necessary part of this. I'm going to go back out of the dashboard and go back into this and see if we can reset this issue here. as you can see. So that was a really good example of how buggy this interface can actually be. There are times when you know you have a hit, but it refuses to call it up. So by going back to the dashboard and clearing it, it solved the problem right away. So what's Jerry tweeting about? Now we have no filters, that's fine. Let's add a seven day outlook tweet from Jerry here. We get a sense that white doom is starting to move in. Um, now this is kind of, you can hunt and peck here too. Let me, since I have Jerry Taft up over here, it's almost just as easy sometimes to go into a different display here because, again, the interface is small and honestly a little buggy. You can go right into the quick link, you can paste the tweet and save it. And you see right away, it recognized it and saved it. it. Does not work in the advanced tab, only the quick tab. But you can operate completely outside of the scribble search environment. You don't have to use your social, uh, social search tool here. But you can just start pasting stuff in as you need it. Um, and realistically for a lot of what we're going to do, that's almost recommended. Um, there's another way you can add uh, Twitter accounts to an event. You see you can choose a Twitter list and you can choose um, specific events as well too. So let's do the, um, oh here we go, National Weather Service for the Chicagoland area. We'll follow them. That'll automatically pull in all of their tweets. And then let's do Tom Skilling, WGN meteorologist. We'll follow him as well too. Now, everything that they put there will be pulled into the event automatically. Um, and you can see you choose a Twitter list as well, too. There's one limitation to all of this, is that you can only follow 10 people total, and that includes a Twitter list. So if we were going to choose a Twitter list with 50 people, you can see there's only eight open follows, so we can't use that. So pick your people wisely, and you can't get around that hard cap of 10 by putting 50 people in a list and choosing it. You can only auto-feed 10 in there 
um, total. You can also type in search terms or hashtags and stuff as well too, but realistically that starts creating a pretty bad user experience, so I would kind of recommend against that as much as possible. So we've saved our filter. Let's go back into uh, write standard. So any new pieces will be there. Let's make sure I hit save. I think I did. Yeah, I did. Great. Okay. Um, let's move on to some of the other ways we can do stuff. I'm going to take a break from social and just do some other uploads as we go here. Um, we have a pretty robust image um, uh, acceptance kind of policy here at Scribble. You can upload a photo if you want. JPEGs are fine. Ends up looking pretty nice. If it wants to click. A little latency here I see. Perhaps I was a bit impatient. And now we're going to pay for it. I think I can cancel out of this, but it won't let me. Well, that crashed nicely. Ah, flash crash. Let's see if I can go back out and come back in and solve this. Okay, we'll upload. Just do a basic JPEG, show you how it looks. You can do a caption. Um, take a brief time to process. And overall, looks pretty nice. Go back to the Quick tab. Um, in addition to JPEGs, it even um, We'll accept file types like uh, animated GIFs. And we'll need a caption for this one, really. Does it rather gracefully. There we go. So again, big pictures on a very visual platform. Certainly an important thing. So you're getting a sense of some of the bugginess too. Um, you know, let's look at how we would do Instagram as well. Now Instagram is tricky because if you're curating this from a desktop computer and stuff like that, there are more limited access. So here's a case where the social search tool is pretty important. Now you could do something generic here like you would, uh, you know, Chicago Snow and you would certainly get some stuff, but you don't really have a sense of what time this was posted in. Let me add this quickly. Well, this was posted very recently, so that's a lovely photo. Maybe we'll keep that one. Sometimes you'll find this and you will get something that's, you know, much too old. And to delete that, just again, hover over the upper right corner, hit delete, and then you're good. The bean. Very snowy bean. So that's nice. So as you can see, relatively easy to do, but kind of hunting and pecking. Let's say you have a more specific person that you're looking for. Um, and again, it's usually best if you, just like with Twitter, you kind of know what you're trying to go for. Again, with all social media in the world, it's a little much. Scott Strizante is a photographer here. I know he took some nice pictures out in a suburb of the suburb of Woodstock last night. So I can easily go to his account, add a couple, and you're starting to get a real sense of all the winterscapes that are out there, though. Some of these images are a little incongruous, but this is more for example than anything. Um, you can also upload photos from 
Flickr as well, too. Again, same caveat, though. <clears throat> you know, you could just go hunting and pecking here, Chicago snow, seeing what comes up. Again, you have no real idea of how much and how old some of these are. Look, this is December 9th. That showed it there. November 11th. So some of these don't even make a lot of sense. So let's leave the social search, social search tool here and go to Flickr and see if we can maybe find a little bit more uh, what we should be doing. Maybe Chicago winter 2013 might be a popular tag. We see some stuff here, but again, we don't know its age. So I'm going to toggle over to the advanced search. We really want stuff taken a little more recently than that. Let's see what we can find here. The Chicago Theater Marquee. Okay, so now here's a case where I have exactly what I want. Um, in the ideal world, I can go directly to this, get a link, kind of a short code link and paste it in there, which we'll give a go. Let's see if that works. Didn't work at all. Oh, no, there we go. Perfect. But what you don't see here is who actually uploaded it. So it recognized it was an image, but actually didn't, as you can see, do what we needed. So in this case, I'm on Flickr. The uploader was Halleck, I think. Let's see if we can find his account here and upload his stuff via the social search tool so it has a little more information. And here we go. So I had to do kind of my better searching outside of the search tool, then go here, and you see you have his icon, his upload. Doesn't look like I put the photo in, it has everything that you need to demonstrate that. So there's a case where pretty much any image link pasted into the quick box, it will try to recognize it and present it, but you start losing some of the uh, functionality. It looks like a less diverse body of content. Now we've seen a lot of photos. Um, we certainly can do video just as well. YouTube, again, same type of search with the same type of caveats. Chicago winter storm, heavy snow, Stewie 2552. <clears throat> Here's CNN. Perhaps that's reliable. Let's add that, see what we get here. Well, looks like it's relatively, well, is it relatively recent? I'm not even sure. Let's launch it for a second to see when it was put up here. As you see, March 5th. So not necessarily the best way to do this. So here's another case. We're going to go outside of the search tool. And I found a video, though flash crashed here, um, I liked from CBS Evening News that I'm just going to grab um, just the URL. Now, I could grab either thing here. I could grab, say, the, uh, the short code link, or I could grab the embed code link. Either one of those pasted into uh, the quick tab will yield exactly what we need. Again, downside is I'm the poster, um, but at least I was able to restrict a and create a better uh, a selection than what randomly came up here at Chicago Snow. So I would say with YouTube, um, it's almost always best to do that um, yourself. You know, you could try to search for users and stuff like that, and it can be reasonably effective. Um, but sometimes time is a little pressing, so um, in this case, I think they'll get a sense once it starts who's doing what. Um, Vimeo is actually just as easy. Only with Vimeo, um, short codes don't work. You have to get the embed code. Here's the Snowpocalypse, Blizzard of 2011. Just grab some share tools if it wants to actually work for me here. See if I refresh it, see if I can get what I need. There we go. So we'll copy this. I'll go back over to our scribble. Again on the quick tab. We've only used advanced tab for dragging and dropping Twitter cards so far. We post, we save, and there's a little bit of history that we want there. 
um, pretty much any video embed code will work. Um, I know NDN works just fine. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of uh, any kind of video player I've seen not work. And, and, and realistically, as long as um, it follows the, I use the iframe version, I think you're going to have no problem at all. One of the surprising things which you saw earlier on was that um, even things like Vine can work in this. Um, now, obviously with Vine, you're going to need to um, have a Vine viewer. Oh, this crashed too. Um, you're going to have a browser-based um, version to kind of peek in on this. Um, I like Vine viewer uh, a lot because pretty searchable, pretty reasonable. Um, and then all you have to do, if you want to say add a Vine, people skating here, is embed the share tool. Um, let's get the link. Grab that short code link there. Toggle back over to the interface. Post, and there you go. You know, I mean, a pretty impressive uh, in its simplicity. You know, so uh, I know Vine certainly has limitations on what you can do with it via uh, a laptop, but the integration in with the uh, Scribble Live environment I find uh, to be quite desirable. Um, Another thing you can do, again, via the same type of things, is uh, audio files. You can do um, either upload an audio file, but that creates kind of a real clunky looking kind of 2005 browser-based feel. So uh, something like SoundCloud, I think, is a better experience. All you have to do is grab the share code. Again, you can't use short link here. Oh, there we go. Cut over the embed code. Again, iframe embed code pretty much works um, every time I've tried it. Paste this in here. Save post. And you get really exactly what you need. I'm Tom Foley, the nasty storm that hit parts of the... So, so you have audio, you have Vine. You know, you have the gram. Instagram works great. I'm Tom Foti, the nasty photos, storm GIFs. that hit parts of the... You have various tweets. Again, you know, you can use Twitter cards, photos with, uh, photos with tweets, uh, polls, posts. You really have a pretty wide array of tools as long as you know when to use the social search tool that they offer here and, uh, and kind of when to go outside of it for some of your searches, realizing there are going to be limitations to what you're doing. Well, we can go quickly outside of this and kind of see. Oh, yes, it's crashed. If I submitted a crash report for every time, I'm going to see what it looks like here. You'll see. And again, fully responsive site on the white label. We have our bookmark. We have our winter weather. See, we really give some space to the visuals here blizzards and photos and stuff. Now, in a breaking news situation like this, this is a little informationally light for me. Um, I'd certainly have more things focused necessarily on what's going on, updates that we can be constantly doing in post form or uh, uh, pulling in tweets if reporters are out on the scene and stuff like that. But at least for a sense of uh, perspective of what can be done, I think we turned out a pretty nice product here. Thank you very much for watching. Um, have any questions, feel free to email me.